what is fast? There's fast, and then there's this. Half the speed of sound on two wheels. This is the story of the quest for the motorcycle land speed record on the iconic Bonneville Salt Flats. I think we got a great opportunity to do this, and you know we want to you know go away from this with a world record. Record. It's not the ideal way to go, but it's better than going home. Here we go. Here we go, baby. Come on. Everyone who's ever owned a motorbike wants to know how fast it will go. The fastest production bikes can reach almost 200 miles an hour. But if you want to go that fast, you need a very long, straight and flat stretch of land. There's few places on Earth better than here at the Bonneville Salt Flats in Utah. This place is synonymous with speed. For almost 100 years, people have come here to set land speed records on two wheels and four. Scott Horner is one of the handful of riders to have exceeded 200 miles an hour on a conventional motorbike. To go any faster, you have to harness our knowledge of aerodynamics and build a streamliner. The last 10 years have seen three teams battle it out to claim the title of the fastest bike in the world. In that time, the record has been pushed past 300 and then 350 miles an hour. In 2009, Chris Carr pushed the Bub streamliner to 367 miles an hour. But this man is determined to go faster. You know, my dad rode motorcycles. When I was a little kid, he rode Triumphs and stuff. And um, I started racing flat track for a while, got into speedway racing, and I did some trials competition. Just motorcycles and competition I've been doing since I was probably 13 years old. Rocky started riding streamliners at Bonneville in 1997, and he's been hooked ever since. The whole difference in Bonneville and land speed racing is just a sensation of speed. I, I mean, I love riding street bikes. Um, you push these around as fast as you can, and yeah, it's a lot of fun, but it's hard to match the intensity of land speed racing. When you're going 350 plus miles an hour and things are going by so fast, your eyes don't focus at those speeds. You know, it's kind of a blur, and you gotta get comfortable with that. You gotta get comfortable drifting the bike sideways. You know, it's always got a little bit of wheel spin. You're fighting the wind and all that. And there's no other kind of motorcycle riding or racing that compares to that. For me, it's just the ultimate thrill. Rocky is one of only a handful of people who have experienced riding motorcycle streamliners over 300 miles an hour, and he's the only rider to survive a crash at that speed. In 2007, he lost control of his machine at over 300 miles an hour. It pencil rolled 12 times before coming to rest. Amazingly, Rocky walked away with hardly a scratch. Before Rocky can get back in the cockpit this year, a huge amount of preparation has to be done back in the team's workshop. The owner and designer of the machine is Mike Akatif. He designed it around two 1300cc motorbike engines. The primary goal of the design was to keep the machine as small and slim as possible. All the necessary components are squeezed into its 20-foot long body. Both turbocharged engines drive the rear wheel and small stabilizing wheels retract into the sides. The nose contains a 30 gallon engine coolant tank. Brakes are useless at these speeds, so two parachutes are built into the tail. The first year we ran this thing, we basically had two stock Hayabusa motors and we were able to go very fast with it. Like I say, we went uh, 336 miles an hour in 04, the first year we went out. But since that time, uh, there's some real competition has picked up in this sport. Uh, Dennis Manning and Chris Carr 
broke our record we set in 06 just a couple days later. It's been back and forth. We've held it twice, they've held it twice. We're uh, about five miles an hour slower than them right now. I don't think we're gonna have that much trouble beating that record. Our ultimate goal is go 400 miles an hour, which for a motorcycle, there's been a few cars that have done that, but as far as the motorcycle goes, it's not, nobody's ever been near that number. So that's kind of our ultimate goal. But they have one main obstacle to overcome, aerodynamic drag. The faster a vehicle goes, the more significant drag becomes. As a vehicle goes past 300 miles an hour, the power needed to overcome this drag increases significantly. In fact, it increases exponentially. To go from 350 to 400 miles an hour, you need 41% more horsepower. The main way they squeeze more power out of the engines is with ever more powerful turbos. We have gone through five different turbo generations. This turbo should get us up into the 30 to 35 pound range at Bonneville. That's gonna make a huge difference as far as power goes. The team have hooked up the machine to a dyno, which allows them to tune the engine, optimizing the settings of the engine management computer. They are hoping they can squeeze a thousand horsepower from the power plant, but generating enough power is only half the battle. That power has to be delivered to the ground, so the machine has to remain upright and stable, and most importantly, remain on the ground. When Rocky crashed in 2007, they attributed the crash to a wet patch of salt. But in 2008, Rocky again had stability issues. It was only after they removed the rear parachute doors that they were able to set a new record of 361 miles an hour. Before returning to the salt flats in 2010, Mike Akatif wants to get to the bottom of these instability problems. He thinks it's down to aerodynamics. As a pilot, he's very familiar with aircraft aerodynamics, but motorbikes driving at half the speed of sound are another matter. Today, in this airplane, we're at 11,500 feet. Beautiful day, it's smooth air. Aerodynamics of airplanes are very, very well understood. They know exactly what will happen if you change the airfoil slightly. Very, very predictable based on prior knowledge, empirical data. You would take this airplane and put it in the ground, take the wings off, put some wheels on it, say at Bonneville, try to see how fast it would go. You're working with an unknown area. With a motorcycle going over half the speed of sound, there just is no data. Nobody's ever been there before. Nobody's ever studied that area. Mike has gone to Swift Engineering in Southern California to try to find some answers. Their wind tunnel is not big enough to accommodate the ACK attack and can only simulate airflow up to 150 miles an hour, less than half the ACK attack's target speed of 400. But they have an alternative solution, computational fluid dynamics where the aerodynamic forces are modeled by a supercomputer. The lines here are surface streamlines. So that okay. gives you an idea of how the, how the air is moving over the body. And you can use those to see whether you have any separated regions, uh -huh. uh, regions that you might want to try to improve, if you because you know, any separated regions, that's going to add more drag. The computer model shows that the ACK attack is actually very streamlined. But what they want to find out is what happens to this smooth air when any side winds act on the bike. We took a look at the vehicle mm -hmm. at what we call different betas or different side slip right. angles. Right. So it's kind of like you would have a crosswind. Exactly. Again, the airflow is coming in kind of at this mm -hmm. angle rather than straight straight down the yeah, center absolutely. line. Take a look at just the flow field. You'll notice it's changed now. It's absolutely. no longer yeah, it's no it's longer shift. symmetric. Yes, yeah, right. And so you can see that as this flow comes in and accelerates around that nose, mm -hmm. you're getting kind of a low pressure region around the nose. Right. So that's producing a essentially a lift, which in this case is a side force. Okay. And Unfortunately, is what it wants to do from an aerodynamic standpoint. As you, when you get in one of these side slips, instead of instead of trying to turn into it and get out of it, mm -hmm. it, it increases that angle, uh, okay. which makes it worse for you. So what the computer model shows is that even a slight crosswind from the right creates a low pressure region on the opposite side of the bike, amplifying the force pulling it to the left. This knowledge reinforces what Mike already knew. It's very important that they don't run the bike in a sidewind. 
while Mike investigated the aerodynamics of the bike, the rest of the team have been trying to tune the engine. And it's taken much longer than the couple of days they had planned. Oh, we figured three or four days max, you know, but that's the way Bonneville lives in Bonneville. We talk about that all the time. Whatever time you estimate, it'll take four times that much. And that's, like I was just telling Mike, you know, you, whatever time it takes, it takes, and you keep going till you get it done. <laughs> There's so many issues. This bike hasn't run in two years, and Bonneville is just a terrible corrosive environment. And we found most of the connectors were corroded, and there's hundreds of connectors on there. So we spent days checking, soldering, crimping connectors. We found the timing was off on this thing from a goof up that happened way back in 07. Finally, uh, yesterday, which is three weeks, uh, we finally found out the root cause of the problem, and we changed two sensors in the bike. When we did, this bike ran just perfect. Anyway, it looks like we're good and we're on our way. I wasn't real hopeful to begin after about a week and a half of this, or two weeks, but now I'm uh, very hopeful that uh, this thing's gonna go pretty fast. We will see. Bonneville, Utah, September 2010. Six of the fastest vehicles on the planet have the massive salt flats to themselves. An 11 mile long track has been laid out. And for the next few days, this will be the fastest racetrack in the world. Rocky Robinson joins the rest of the Akatak team. It's the first time they've all been back on the salt together for two years. The first priority for Rocky is to check out the condition of the salt surface. In the winter, the whole area is flooded as the flats turn back into a lake. They never know how much dry salt they will have available. We've got an 11 mile long course, and so it's a mile shorter than when we set the record in 08. The ends are a little bit loose, um, softer, so just gotta be real careful taking off. But once you get going about three quarters of a mile in, it's really good, so you know we know we're ready. The bike's ready. Um, I think the course will, will, will be fine for what we're trying to do. It's just, um, you know, Mother Nature it, you know, has the final say in all this. The crosswind is still over four miles an hour, so they have to wait. It's between uh, four and six here. Rocky and the team have learned from experience that running in a crosswind can be disastrous. That experience was confirmed by the aerodynamic analysis they commissioned just before getting to Bonneville. The tower of the wind station is up about 15 feet off the ground. The delay gives Rocky a chance to mentally prepare for his first run. There's nowhere else to practice, and this would be the first time he's been back in the cockpit in two years. When the wind finally allows him to run, his speed will be measured by officials from the International Motorcycle Record Authority, the FIM. The rules are deceptively simple. A vehicle has to pass through a measured mile in both directions within two hours. Its speed is measured by official timers in the middle of the course, and the vehicle's record speed is the average of these two times. And breaking a record is all about aerodynamics, traction, and most importantly, horsepower. The turbocharged engine achieves its maximum power when fed with cool, dense air. So the team uses ice to cool the air on its way to the engines. And Rocky likes to have a martini at the other end. Just run it to 10 as soon as you see that light shift it, OK? Try to be 10 grand going into the mile, and you'll have a, a big old record. So see what you can do. OK. OK. But soon enough, the wind drops, and it's time to fire up the machine.
It's a good first shakedown run, but already Rocky has come up against a stability problem. The bike is being pushed to the left side of the course as if there was a crosswind. But all the wind meters were reading zero. I don't know, but that's what it was doing. It just kept going left. And I kept, if you watch the video, you'll see the horizon. I just kept trying to creep it back on the course. The rear doors, which cover the parachute tubes, were identified as the cause of the instability the last time they ran. Mike Akative is determined to keep them on as they make the machine more aerodynamic and should help it cut through the air. But they think they might be out of alignment, causing the bike to steer to the left. But Rocky would rather take the doors off altogether. He's sure he has ample power to counteract the aerodynamic drag. This thing has so much more power, but I'm so upset that I can't use it. However, Mike Akative has another trick up his sleeve. The aerodynamic engineers suggested that if they continued to have stability issues, they could try fitting a vortex generator. This device should smooth the airflow over the back of the machine. So we, we've done all we can do back there. Don't work, they're coming off. Rocky is sealed into his cocoon-like cockpit. And sets off back down the course. Hopefully, the vortex generators will solve the aerodynamic problems with the rear of the vehicle. The machine is picking up speed, but this time, the engines are misfiring. It looks fast, but not nearly fast enough. 287. Yeah, uh, he may have handling problems. Uh, I don't know what's going on. The thing just wants to go left. Just wants to go yeah. Doors are coming off. I opened the doors halfway through the mocks and anything to lose, and actually it, it gets better with the doors open for whatever reason. Doors are coming off. But We're going to go back. They said it was splattering. It was there. really bad for like the first mile and a half. It was just going blah, 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 blah. But the biggest, my biggest problem is just wanting to go left. I okay. Can't, All right. I can't run out hard when I'm just trying to stay that, on the track. That's fine. What we're going to do, we're going to take a break. We're, we're going to run with the doors on. Okay. Time to take the machine back to their pits. The vortex generators did not work, so the first thing they do is remove the doors altogether. But now they have to find out why the engine is misfiring. Let's do it with a starter. This latest setback is a blow to the team, especially after they received expert analysis of the machine's aerodynamics and spent three weeks tuning the engine. But Rocky and the whole team know only too well how difficult what they're trying to do really is. It's the holy grail of motorcycle racing, you know. Um, it's not like you're going out to race a pack of guys and come in first place. You're trying to be the fastest guy ever. I think we got a great opportunity to do this, and you know we want to go, you know, go away from this with a world record. And um, you know it's only getting higher and harder and more difficult. So um, you know you you just do your best and you know hope for a good outcome. To have any chance of surpassing the current record of 367 miles an hour. The team is going to have to work long into the night. We've been up since 4.30 this morning. Our poor crew, they've been working on a bike till about 12.30 last night. Um, got the engine running really good. Despite months spent preparing the bike, the crew's job is far from over once they get to Bonneville but they are satisfied the machine is now as ready as they can make it. And Rocky's impressed with the first run already. He says, you know, this thing runs really good. I said, yeah, it does. That's why we spent all that time on the dyno. So it's been fun. It's a challenge, but that's what this is about. It's a, this is our life. <laughs> Although Rocky has blasted across the salt many times before, his family are always there at the start. Yeah, he will always be here to watch him. I can't let him run without my being here. It's nerve-wracking for a mother because you're always going for higher speeds. 
and um, you know it was great to go 300 and then now no that's not enough now they want to go you know all the way up to the four if they could <laughs> so it is tough I'm just here to support my brother yeah so I'm trying to calm him down I don't know how good of a job I really do at that but the part that gets me is racing's racing we come out here and it just seems like it's you know this is what we do but as soon as they start strapping them in it starts getting to me you know it starts choking me up and you start seeing how serious it really is and it's for real and um, it's uh it's quite a feat rocky wind's perfect been that, been that way for about five minutes it's really calming down okay i want to start my motor to get Rocky accelerates through the gears and tries to keep the engine above 8,000 RPM, where the turbo generates the most power. But the bike is still veering to the left, and he has to lean to the right to compensate, so he can't open the throttle all the way. Entry speed, 302. He went over 300 miles an hour, but the machine is still leaning to the left. Kilo speed, 307. What in the world is going on here? Keep going, it just always ends up on the left side. Of course, the wind's going that way. And, and, and I'm just... There was no wind. I know. I mean, the bike's running good, but while I'm accelerating, the bike ends up on the left side of the course, and I have to counter it to keep it from going off the course. And as I do, the only way I can do it is make the bike lean to the right. And when I get where it's really lean and I can't stay in the throttle, because the tire's square, it's got a corner. When you get up on that corner, you don't have any bite. With no crosswinds and aerodynamic effects ruled out, suspicion falls on the tires. You can't buy tires designed to exceed 300 miles an hour in your local tire store. They have to be specially manufactured. And even these are designed for four-wheeled vehicles, not motorbikes. Since the machine last ran two years ago, they fitted new tires but more careful inspection of them has revealed that they are not symmetrical. Well, the only thing we haven't changed that we know works is um, the tire that we ran in 2008. Um, it's gone real fast. We haven't had any problems with it. But there, back in the team's shop, a 12-hour drive away. Luckily, Mike has a plane. We're going to fly to San Jose. We're going to pick up uh, the tire that was originally used in 2008 and 2006 and handled fine. That's the only thing we've changed in the uh, motorcycle. So if it still turns left, I don't know what to say. While Mike Akatif makes the 1,000 mile round trip, the rest of the team can take a break and prepare for the final attempt the following day. For Rocky and his family, this week is an emotional roller coaster. Everyone knows how difficult and dangerous what he's attempting is. The motorcycles are so critical. They have to have everything perfect. I mean, it just, there's no room for error at all. Where a car, we can run with a, a crosswind and stuff, but the bike, you just can't do it. I, I don't know if, you know, speed changes anything, but whether you're going 100 in my eyes or 400 miles an hour, yeah, that's, I don't want anything to happen to them. Yeah, it's something that never changes. Um, you know, right before a, a big run, you know, you're excited and adrenaline's going and all that, you know, and there's a lot on the line. And um, these things are so complicated, sometimes there's problems, so you get these big highs and then you have to go back to the pits and wait it out for a few hours while they work on it. And, you know, and then you're down to a low and you gotta build yourself up all over again. It's this, this ongoing train wreck that lasts a week. <laughs> Mike Akative has retrieved the tire from his shop in San Jose. But it's after midnight by the time he gets back to Bonneville. The team are up again well before dawn to fit it to the bike. They know they are running out of time to break the record, but they won't give up trying. We wanted to leave saying that we did everything we could possibly do to get this record. And if we can't get it, 
Yeah. That's why it's been there a long time, and that's why it's a, you know, a very, very tough record to, to get. Despite months of preparation and testing, it comes down to the very last day of the meeting, and the team are still struggling to overcome unforeseen problems. Bonneville is known for that. We call it salt gremlins. Everything at home worked great, but as far as actually running the bike with somewhere where you're actually going, we haven't had the opportunity to do that because there's just nowhere this big to, you know, to do that. So we would have known about the tire issues you know, until we actually made some passes. But today, the, the wind's not blowing. Um, it's ready to go. We should be running within a half hour or so. And um, you know, if that was the problem, um, we'll know instantly. If it was, we'll go fast. If it wasn't, you know, we'll be on to the next thing. But uh, we're all hoping that's what it is. This is going to be the morning. Thank you. It happened last time in 08 and on a Friday, uh, right on schedule. So hopefully this will be the day. We're at the same place we were last time we got the record. So, but with more power, so it should just go faster. Boy, this has been a thrash. It's been long nights, too. In the last four days, they've modified the machine's aerodynamics, retuned the engines, and now replaced the tires. But at least Mother Nature appears for now to be on their side. OK, well, there's zero wind everywhere. Perfect. If you can get it to near 10 grand or six, going in the mile, you're going to put down a good speed. The tower has been zero with one spike of one mile an hour. Zero at the three mile. One mile an hour at the seven and a half. Can't get much better. Yeah, Ten more tower. <laughs> <laughs> OK. It's fast, but something else is wrong with the engines. Rocky has good and bad news. What, what was the speed? When the, it wouldn't go in the high gear. I couldn't shift it. I was at the rev limiter way before the mile. I kept trying to shift it. It wouldn't go. The thing handles great. I can drive it anywhere I want now. It was stuck on the rev limiter like a mile and a half before the mile. I kept trying to shift it. It wouldn't shift. So it was like I could never get it into sixth gear. Shift in the six. Doesn't do first, now it'll do six. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's hugely frustrating for the team. They suspect the gearbox has now given out. The only solution is to replace it. But they won't be able to do that before sunset today and the end of this event. But there is a possibility that Mike Cook will be able to arrange to use the salt the following day. Well, if we did this, we'd be ready to go like at eight. And if we can't get it done by 10 o'clock, we're just gone. OK. Let me see what I can do. OK. I put two fresh new motors in it, new gearboxes. How long a job is it pulling the bottom off and changing that? Have you done it? Oh, yeah. Uh, it'll take me probably an hour and a half to two hours a motor. OK. So it's going to take us three or four to get these out. Four hour job. Yeah, like a little back together. Yeah, we got that clock tight super stuff one minute. Just when the team thought they'd done it all, now they have to take the whole machine apart again. It's going to be another long night. Changing both motors took all day and most of the night. But as the sun rises on the sixth day, the Akatak team think they're ready. That's about 14, 15 hours. I think it's about 18 hours to change both. So, good thing we only changed one. Fired it up about midnight? Yeah, midnight. <laughs> we, uh, the phrase, burning the midnight oil, we did. <laughs> I wish them the best. They, you can't say there hasn't been an effort made the entire week for these fellas. It's unbelievable. The tenacity and will to go it's it's amazing i love it let's get it ice right now we we only got 40 minutes we want to be sitting there at eight o'clock i'm ready to go 
this is the last day, day number six. So the first three or four days, we were chasing tire problems. Every pass I made, the bike would try to turn left, and I'd counter steer it and lean to the right. And so I just couldn't go fast because all I was trying to do is keep it on the track. And so we kept making runs in the low 300s. Just yesterday was the first time we ran it with the, with the tire we ran in the past. And it handled good finally. It went straight. And so I was real excited about that, but I couldn't get it out of fourth gear. Again, it's a six-speed gearbox, so uh, that was the, the next gremlin. And uh, But, you know, we got a new motor in it, so hopefully we got that fixed. So, yeah, the potential's there. Uh, we just need two good runs and a little bit of luck on our side. Maybe, maybe we'll have that today. With the engines rebuilt, for most of the team, their job is largely done. All the pressure is now on Rocky. He's a little tired, but he, he's at his best when he's that way. But I just feel it. I think it's going to happen, and we'll see, though. Know. What's it been like? Really nerve-wracking. Yeah. Just, it's my bill, so everything goes wrong. Anything that can, will. But we're going to do it this morning. It seems uh, like they're both running real well, so this is it. This is the this is the last shot right here. If everything else works, nothing else breaks, it's possible we can get a pretty good record here. I would feel bad if uh, we left here and said, "Oh, we could have done this, or we should have gotten that tire, or we should have changed that motor." It'd be none of that. We did it all, so. We'll get what we get on this next run. There's an old Bonneville axiom that goes, there's a million and one ways to not get a record. <laughs> we found a whole bunch of them this week. There's a lot of teams that have come out here for 25 years and never set a record. It's hard to do. You know, there's a, a million stories of how about we almost got it done. We may be one today, you don't know. From now on, it's Rocky and Lady Luck. She makes the final decision. Can you give us a wind record all the way down? And it's been holding that for a couple of minutes. Zero, zero, and one mile an hour. Get in there, Rocky. Good. Right. Yeah, Rocky, uh, this is Mike. Rocky's in the bike. They're just finishing strapping them in. Copy that. Wind is still zero here at the tower. Is that good, Rock? You there, baby? I got him in. Mm -hmm. I got on. I got going real hard. Well, don't shift yeah. too slow. Just bang that thing and hit it. Well, then when I, I had him all lined up after I got going real good, but when I got to where I need to be in high gear, it just won't shift. It just, I mean, they were lined up, but it wouldn't go into the next well, gear. And I tried, I pulled the clutch, I backed the throttle, I revved it. Okay, well, don't don't be just real gentle in that. You gotta bang I, that thing. I, I was. I, I mean, okay. the bike works great. I just can't get it to shift. Having spent all night replacing an engine, Mike and the team don't understand why it won't shift into high gear. 
Well, I, after you came back, I shifted it. I, I'm I know, now, no problem. Loaded. I mean, I'm just saying it did the exact same thing as the last run yesterday. It was the exact same way when I got the high gear. Just forget the clutch. Just stab, shift this thing, blip it off, get it. Okay, and if that works, go to the next gear. Next gear. As far as the, the handling, the thing's it's a okay. kick in the well, butt. We, it, that part's great. Okay. But the shifting, and, and I don't know, I struggled with it the whole run. Okay, well, we've got to get you down there and get you back while the wind's calm, that's all. Could, uh, Howard, could you repeat winds one more time for Rocky? Uh, we got two mile an hour headwind at the tower. Three mile per hour tailwind at the three mile. 3.2 headwind at the eight. gear it just it just won't move I, I shifted the same all the way through and all the other no. gears went perfect when i get to go trying to get into the higher gear it just the pedal Were you just in doesn't fifth move gear or not? i was trying to go in the fifth i was uh, doing uh, everything but jumping want up to go down back if it's gear. calm uh, try we, to we gotta you, find a way it's not shifted. Shifted. well there's no, no i didn't there's no way to troubleshoot that's we want to take the engines out and take no, the gearbox. No, I don't want to do that. I'm just saying it's Nothing. doing the exact same thing. You know what I mean? It's there's something going on in them high gear. Yeah. If they're going to solve this latest problem, they're going to have to move fast. All week, the team have come up against one problem after another and solved them all. But Mike Akatif fears they've run out of options and time. Mike, what do you want to do with this meat? Do you want, to, want us to hang you up or you want us to go again? Or Why are we here? Well, we're here to we went set a record. Let's do it. OK. Only four out of the machine's six gears work. The team are already running on borrowed time, and now they seem to have run out of ideas to solve this last problem. Rocky Robinson has already decided that this will be his last season at the controls of the Akatak. But this was not the way he wanted to bow out. He's racking his brains for a solution. On here. If we have the gearing to get us to that, with, with moving the... Um, Dover rev up higher. Well, I just had an idea. It, it'll shift to fourth, and we got up to 330 on that last run. I asked him what would happen if we geared it taller in fourth gear since it's all I can get it into. He moves the rev limiter higher. Can we go over 367 in fourth gear? So, you know, essentially we're just going to try to take fifth and sixth gear out of the equation and try to build speed with a four-speed gearbox. And if we had the gearing, and if we can set the rev limiter high enough to pull the gear, because we're going to have to run it hard, I think the bike's got enough power and we can still get the record. It's not the ideal way to go, but it's better than going home. Uh, uh, what's the uh, dr drive gear? 1.043. I'm going to say 32 is on there right now. 
three, two. Yeah, it'll, it'll you. work. It's okay. Twenty six is a small. If we did that, in fourth gear to go three eighty five. Okay. All right, all right, here's what we got to do. We got to get it up, we got to get the body off, we got to pull the chain cases, flip those gears while somebody's changing the rear wheel. The rear wheel's got to come off, and those rockets got to go on, we got to get a new chain. So who's going to do what? Frank will do the cases. Like I said, you already ran it to 10-9. Ken, you want to take over in the wheel? Nothing okay. came out of it then. Right there. I'll just run it to oh, yeah. the we got nothing to lose. The bike has the power to do it, and I'm excited to drive it. So, you know, I like that we have a plan coming together. Ten one would be a good place to be. Ten one or ten two. Ten thousand. No, three sixty seven. So above ten thousand, you got. It. He just wants it so badly. I mean, he's like, I'm not leaving here until I get it. <laughs> I think that thing would go close to four hundred if you got perfect conditions. And, uh, he's ready to do it too. That's the cool thing. At the tower, we've got two miles an hour. Lost in one at the eight. We're good. Get him in there. Well, first run out of the way. There's always two runs to a world record. This one is just on the limit. We'll see if the return run is uh, higher. Long time coming, and boy, I mean, last day, last hour, you know. Whew, I'm getting too old for this stuff. <laughs> I'll tell you, I said, I don't think we'd have that hard as time beating Dennis's record. We had a hell of a time trying to beat Dennis's record. But it looks like we're going to be able to do it. This run, if he gets in low gear should, and everything else works, it should be a real good run. We'll find out shortly. To beat the current official record, their two-way average must exceed 367 miles an hour. He needs at least 366 on this return run. Oh, close, but One no cigar. 
Boy, you're knocking on the door. Can you give us a rough uh, average of what he's got? Combined with the previous run, that puts the mile average at 366.359, so they're about exactly one mile an hour below what they need. So we can go back under, again. We're going back. Earlier on, man, a break loose, I correct, a break loose, I correct. We have to go back because um, that'll be our first run for the return. As the machine now only has four gears rather than six, they need more RPM from the engines. Bob Worth has to reprogram the computer to squeeze out a few more horsepower. Man, it's never been one mile an hour off a record. Gosh. This thing has to cool off a little. We just ran two runs in 366. It's, it's a little tired. Oh, he needs one more. It's just amazing what, what a week it's been. So we're going to go back this way once we get regrouped and everything and try it again. <laughs> we're close. I mean, he can't get any closer. <laughs> so we're going to put a little bit more boost to it for a safety net if I get in trouble. Uh, we can drag race across the measured mile if I don't get that good of a, a run up to it. But you can only put so much to it. And we've already squeezed a lot, but we're going to turn it just a little bit more. Hope I don't burn it up. <laughs> the only danger now is that the engine will simply explode before they can set the record. You need 368 average. You went in at 361 last time I'm with going the low in. gear. I'm going in faster. <laughs> I know you will. For what has to be his very last chance this year, the team watch as Rocky strapped into the machine for possibly his last ride. Tower, this is Drew. Could we have a wind report down the course, please? Zero at the tower. Zero at the three mile. Yeah. Zero at the eight mile. Oh, oh, Rocky, oh. it's 2008 on the wind, buddy. truck, I guess. As soon as I got released, I held it wide open. Greg, Greg told me I had to leave it wide open the whole run. So, anyways, I had, I had it twisted though, man. I did. I had it all the way. Thanks, Greg. And the bike, the bike just worked great. No drama in the run, other than the takeoff. Once I got it hooked up and going, it just went. I think our exit speed was 394. Not a bad run. <laughs> well. We talked earlier, and I said this was the one, right? Oh, we did it. I mean, we did it. <laughs>